they were an embarrassment. The Italian national team failed to qualify for the 2018 World Cup, their first no-show in 60 years. Now, they haven't lost for 30 matches and are shocking Europe with their beautiful football. Mamma mia, what the heavens happened to Italy? It was a catastrophe. Nessuno ha voglia di vincere, tutti hanno sottovalutato l'avversario, ma già dall'andata, anche adesso l'ha sempre sottovalutato, non sapevo nessuno che cercava il gol, nessuno che aveva fame, quella che manca l'Italia è la fame, la voglia di vincere. Italy failed to reach the World Cup in 2018, for the first time in 60 years, after failing to win a playoff against Sweden. An absolute disgrace for a team so rich in football history, the winner of four World Cups. Two images summed up the football tragedy and live with us to this day. The tears of Buffon, showing the impotence of not being able to play a final World Cup with his nation before retirement. And the bust-up between Daniele De Rossi and Italy's former coaching team after being asked to warm up. Why the hell should I go on? He responded. We don't need a draw here, we need to win. De Rossi was shocked and he gestured at Lorenzo Insigne, the most dangerous man in Italy, who was kept on the bench during the qualifiers. Italy, trapped in an exaggerated version of their classical Catanaccio style of play, had lost all identity. Giampiero Ventura was fired as manager immediately after their playoff defeat to Sweden, but no replacement was named for three months. The president of the Italian FA resigned from his job. Ho rassegnato le dimissioni e come mero atto politico ho chiesto anche quelle del Consiglio federale. Nessuno le ha rassegnate, quindi sono rimaste le mie. Giorgio Chiellini, Gigi Buffon, Andrea Barzagli and Daniel De Rossi retired from the international team. And then, in May of 2018, a familiar face showed up. Ma questo potrebbe essere il momento, il momento giusto, il momento giusto perché comunque eh, bisogna fare qualcosa per, per la nazionale, non essere andati ai mondiali è una cosa insomma per noi che abbiamo fatto il tifo per la nazionale da sempre è una cosa abbastanza difficile e quindi in un momento così difficile ho pensato che forse poteva essere il momento giusto e ripeto credo che ogni allenatore poi alla fine aspira a diventare CT della nazionale Brilliant Italian manager Roberto Mancini was out of the spotlight for several years after a failed comeback to Inter Milan but when he took over the Italian national team, it was the right time, too. And Mancini was clear about his intentions for the team since day one. Per bene, prima di tutto, e poi che riesca a riportare l'Italia dove merita, cioè sul tetto del mondo e sul tetto d'Europa. Some laugh at him, others were puzzled, but the only reality is facts. Italy won all 10 of their Euro 2020 qualifiers, scoring 37 goals and conceding four. They finished top of their 2020-2021 Nations League group ahead of the Netherlands and will face Spain in the October semifinals. Italy also have a perfect record so far in their World Cup qualifiers. And after their final Euro group stage match against Wales, Italy equaled a record mark that stood for 82 years, going unbeaten in 30 straight matches. Yet the most impressive thing is, Italy are playing beautiful attacking football. At least for what the Italians made us used to. Mancini was lucky enough to grab Italy at a point where a lot of the old blood had just made way for the new one. And as the bar was so low, he had all the freedom in the world to experiment. He dropped the classic back line of five defenders, opting for a free-flowing 4-3-3 system, powered by the midfield trio of Giorginio, Marco Baratti, and Nicolo Barella, an organizer, an enforcer, and a line breaker. Up front, Insigne has become a regular, partnered with Federico Chiesa to supply a reborn Cillo Immobile. Italy has gone for the young players, backed up by the experience of a few veterans like Chiellini and Leonardo Bonucci at centre-back. In turn, they score a lot, concede very little. Mancini's brave enough to look past the Italian giants in his search for players. Nicolo Barella was called up as a Cagliari player long before signing for Inter. 
His Euro 2020 squad includes footballers from Torino, Sassuolo, and Atalanta, as well as the usual ballers from Juventus, Milan, Napoli, and Inter. It's a Serie A all-star team. But we are not talking at a fixed starting 11. We are talking about a group, a united group of footballers that place the well-being of the collective above individuals, something you very much need when you have the aspirations Roberto Mancini has. The objective now is to spend the summer in the seaside hometown of Porto Novo, signing autographs as a champion manager. Those were Mancini's words in May of this year, just moments away from the Euro. What makes a winning team? We can discuss tactics all day long. Of course, having the right amount of talent is fundamental. But there is one thing Mancini has worked harder on than anyone in these past few years. The group. Names have become interchangeable in Italy, which means they are as strong as the weakest link on the team. It also means that if a key player like Verratti or Insigne is unavailable, any other player can fill in for them because everybody knows what is expected of them. And that is achieved through a collective mentality that has to be favored from the coach down. This is a result of Roberto Mancini trying to make amends for his own career as an international footballer. Bobby was one of Italy's greatest talents as a number 10 in an age where Italians were full of them. His greatest footballing regret is that he never played at a World Cup. In 1986, he had a fight with the national team coach and never apologized. Then, in 1990, he was called up, but Azelio Vincini never put him on the pitch. Against Wales, Mancini showed what his team is all about. Italy were 1-0 up at the time, but also had a one-man advantage after Ethan Ampadu was sent off in the 55th minute, meaning the match and the group were as good as done. So Mancini made his fifth and final substitution, bringing off Donnarumma and replacing his first-choice keeper with Sirigu. It's a gesture of goodwill, one that makes a player that would otherwise get no minutes in the tournament feel even more as part of the team. While football isn't always won by the best group of people, it certainly helps when everyone on the squad has the same intentions and regards each other as friends. It's helped Italy so far to overcome their negative record and overall poor form, transforming them into the team that's both shocking and putting fear into every other fan. Are they good enough to put Italy back on top of the footballing map? If we take a comprehensive look at the current Italian squad, only five players are over the age of 30 all of them in key positions that require a more experienced profile. Chiellini, Bonucci, and Acerbe in the center-back positions. Ciro Immobile, the main offensive threat. And Salvatore Sirigu, the second-choice goalie to Donnarumma. The rest of the team is divided into the golden age bracket of football, which goes from 26 to 29 years old. It's the prime point of maturation for elite footballers, and the World Cup is just around the corner. Italy's momentum should be noted. The only thing Mancini's squad is lacking is a proper test. The added mental pressure of having to win in a knockout round against a team theoretically better than you. Italy's last three losses before their unbeaten streak came at the hands of Argentina, France, and Portugal. And their current run had them up against rivals such as Finland, Liechtenstein, Armenia, Lithuania, San Marino. You know where we're going with this. Italy still need to prove just how good they actually are. So far, Mancini's spin on the team is clear for everyone to see. They are undoubtedly better than they were when they failed to reach the 2018 World Cup. The generational transition has been done perfectly. And there's more than one reason to be excited about the Azzurri. But let's try to keep our feet on the ground. For now.